Hello friends, this video on body fluids and circulation part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now the question is, what is the composition of blood? What is blood made up of? As I said, it is mostly water with around 20 to 22 percent of solids that has a lot of things in it. So let us see in detail about the composition of blood. It was observed that several experiments were carried out to see what all things is a, are, is a blood made up of. Now, a sample of blood was taken in a test tube and the process of centrifugation was performed. Now, what is this process of centrifugation or what is the centrifugation? The centrifugation is a process where you actually rotate substances at a very high speed. Now, when you rotate it at a very high speed in a circular path, a centrifugal force acts. And a centrifugal force always acts outward. For example, let us suppose this is the center. And if, if you rotate a substance like this, there will be a centripetal force which will try to push it towards the center. And there will be a centrifugal force which will tend to I mean, take it far away. And the balance between these two forces helps the substance to actually rotate. So when, when you actually take a sample of blood and rotate it at a very high speed, it has been observed that the denser particles of the blood, they tend to get deposited at the lower end of the test tube, whereas the lighter particles tend to come towards the upper side. So something like this, let us suppose we take a sample of blood in a test tube and then you put it in a centrifuge. Now this is how a centrifuge looks like. So if you see inside you have a stand where it is pivoted at the center. So this is the center, this portion is the center, the green colored structure which you see. And then you place the test tube like this and this is going to rotate at a very high speed. Now when it rotates at a very high speed what happens is this is the these test tubes contain blood. Now what happens is the different components of the blood get segregated. So it is observed that the very dark colored substance gets deposited at the bottom. So if you see here this is the dark colored substance at the bottom. Next layer is a buffy buffy coat kind of a structure if you see like it is like fumy a very thin layer in between and then again you have a kind of watery layer which, which looks like it is not red in color but it is a little yellowish you can say or a little watery in color. So these are the three layers which are observed. This is the first layer, this thin one is the second layer and this last one is the third layer. So when the sample of blood is rotated at a very high speed, it gets divided into these three layers. That's because the denser components of blood tend to go down in the test tube. They tend to move to the lower side because when they are rotating, the test tube is like this. So the dense, denser particles tend to go farther away from the center and the lighter particles tend to come near the center. So that is how it happens. Then studies were done on what are these three components and then it was observed that the first layer was nothing but plasma the watery layer which I'm talking about and this plasma constitutes about 55% of the total volume of blood. So this is the maximum majority portion. The second layer which is a very thin coat that is a buffy coat which contributes even less than 1% of the total volume of blood. And the lowest layer, that is the layer of the red blood cells. So this constitutes about 45% of the total volume. So now this picture might be giving you a wrong idea. That's because here you can actually see that the red colored layer is more and the green colored layer is less. But actually that is not the case. So this is 55%. That means this is, this is more than half of it. So this will go maybe up to here this green colored structure. So this one that is the plasma is almost more than half that is 55% and RBCs is 45% and this one is even less than 1% this thin layer that is the buffy coat. So this is how the different components of blood were 
recognized for the first time, you can say that. So plasma was one of the very important components of blood which constitutes almost 55% of the total volume of blood. Next component was the most dense components that is the RBC or the red blood cells and then the components were the Buffy coat and this Buffy coat contained, later this Buffy coat was further studied and it was found that it contained the white blood cells and the platelets. So this is how these four components of blood were discovered or recognized for the first time. So now let us quickly talk about the different components of blood. So with the previous experiment, it was known that blood is made up of four types of components. That is the plasma or the blood plasma, which is the watery substance which is present uh, and which has a lot of proteins and everything in it. The next is the red blood cells or the erythrocytes. So this is another name for red blood cells. So many a times they are abbreviated as RBCs and we call them RBCs also instead of calling them red blood cells. They are also called erythrocytes. The third component is white blood cells or WBCs and they are called leukocytes. And the fourth component is the platelets or the thrombocytes. So plasma was this one. So this is plasma that is the watery fluid. This is RBC, the most dense and the dark red in color. And this layer contained WBCs as well as the platelets. So now we will talk about the structure and function of each of these components of blood to get a better understanding about blood. So now let us look at the different components of blood. So we'll start our discussion with plasma. Now, as I mentioned, it is the extracellular matrix that is uh, the ground substance, you can say, the fluid-like substance which is present on which all other the components of blood are suspended or embedded. So, it, you can say that plasma is the fluid on which all other blood components like the RBCs, the WBCs, they are all floating on the plasma. So, plasma is the extracellular matrix. So, here you can see this is plasma. And on this plasma, you have the different blood components, that is the different cells of blood. Now, this is the fluid matrix on which the blood cells are embedded. Now, when I say blood cells, I'm talking about the other blood cells like the RBCs or the WBCs or the platelets. So, they are all embedded in the fluid-like plasma. If you want to know about the composition of plasma, again, this is also 90% water and that is that presence of water gives it the fluidic nature. So it has 90% of water and 8% of proteins and the remaining 2% it has other substances like hormones, nutrients and electrolytes. So that is how the plasma is uh, composed of. Now there are many proteins which are present in plasma as I said just now. Now some of the important proteins which are present in plasma and which play a very important role uh, in the functioning of blood and they are fibrinogen, this fibrinogen helps in blood clotting. So blood clotting is an important thing. So whenever you talk about blood clotting, the first thing that comes to your mind is if you get a cut somewhere, what happens? It starts bleeding. Correct? Now, does it keep on bleeding forever? No. Right? Now, what would happen if, if it keeps on bleeding forever? In that case, there will be excessive loss of blood from your body and that will cause a a problem inside your body and it can even lead to death of somebody so that means we need to control the loss of blood now who controls the loss of blood so that is basically controlled by the process of clotting so you would have observed that whenever there is a cut it bleeds for some time and after that a small clot develops at that point and then later gradually it heals so fibrinogen plays an important role in the process of blood clotting. Similarly, there is another protein called globulin and this helps in the defense mechanism of the body. That is, it helps to fight against infection. So that means it helps in the process of defense. And the third major protein is albumin and it helps in maintaining the osmotic balance. That is the right balance of water. Now, one important point to note here is all these proteins are present in plasma. So you might be wondering that that means plasma plays 
They have in all the major roles of blood. For example, it helps in blood clotting. It also helps in defense mechanisms and maintaining osmotic balance. But that is not the case because all these presents which are present, uh, all these uh, proteins which are present in the plasma, they are present in their inactive form. So they are not active. Therefore, they do not cannot do their functions. Now, when they become active. Now, in order to make them active, the other components of blood are useful and that is why we need them and that is why they also play a vital role in the functioning of blood. So, these are some of the major proteins which are often termed as plasma proteins. The three important plasma proteins are fibrinogen, globulin and albumin. So, here in the picture you can actually see their respective structures. So, this is the structure of fibrinogen, this is the structure of globulin and this one is Albumin. Now, as you know, there is no point talking about the structure because the protein structures are always complex. So are they. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.